the apocalyptic signs of water turning into blood. Bible prophecy. Ezekiel 32, 6, I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. Joel 2.30, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Today before our eyes, we see God fulfilling His word. But there's a way He's fulfilling it that I want to say a little about. And the Bible says in Psalm 36 verse 6, is God says, The only reason why I judge is to keep man alive. I allow some to die, so the majority will live. A striking and shocking phenomenon has been leaving scientists and people worldwide completely baffled. As waters worldwide have begun to turn into blood, these significant occurrences are most certainly precursors of the trouble to come. July 27th, 2011. Parts of America became blood. Come on, somebody. Texas, USA. A lake turned blood red, prompting questions about biblical prophecies. February 16, 2012. Right in Lebanon, waterways became blood. The Beirut River mysteriously turned blood red in Lebanon. June 29th, 2012. In India, the rain became blood. Blood this time was found falling out of the skies in the form of rain in India, causing mass panic. July 30th, 2012. Then a sea between Russia and Ukraine turned blood. In the Azov Sea, between Russia and Ukraine. December 22nd, 2012. A deadly cold snap took Ukraine by force killing and causing mass panic, hospitalizing hundreds. Only three days later, December 25th, 2012. Russia was also hit with its coldest temperatures on record, dropping to nearly 60 degrees below zero. Also August 9th, 2012. A lake in France became blood. One source said it looks like something extraterrestrial. God is allowing these things because he's a God of mercy. He's a God of love. He has to cause, come on, I don't have to tell you, I have to tell you, but work with me. He has to cause men to wonder. He has to cause men to fear. He has to cause fearful sights to happen upon the earth. But in the midst of this trouble, God said, listen, it seems as if they don't get it. So I'm going to get another sign. And God caused the largest river in the country to become blood. That's what I call it. I'm not going to get too grammatical. To become blood. The Bible said they will become blood. September 7th, 2012. Yangtze River in China. The largest river. Never ever seen anything red. For God said in Joel 2, 28, 29. He said, while I'm pouring out of my spirit upon the people, I'm going to be pouring out wrath. We talk about it in the, in, in, in the World Revival Convention. Anybody remember? But while there's pouring out in the, in the last days, I pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Then it went on and it says, there shall be signs in the sun, signs in the moon. Come on, somebody. And there shall be blood. But God is so good that God caused not just destruction of buildings, leaving folks alive, but God caused another sign of blood. Blood always means death. When you're talking about the blood of Jesus, it always means death. It always means worse coming. You don't need a mighty prophecy. The prophecy is already out. It means there's worse coming to China. It means there's worse coming to the East. It means there's worse coming to Asia. It means there's worse coming to the Earth. January 12th, 2013. A powerful avalanche of mud and dirt had taken away 10% of a village in southwest China. Earlier, rescuers drenched in mud swarmed the scene, digging fervently with shovels, looking for signs of life. Instead, they found shredded clothes, wallets and other evidence of those killed in the disaster. November the 18th, 2012. Blood rain also poured out on Sri Lanka, causing astonishment. Furthermore, November the 27th, 2012. In Australia, the beaches suddenly turned blood red and the following interpretation went forth on youtube.com slash harvest army November 28, 2012 The sea turning blood in Australia signifies great distress and perplexity determined upon Australia and neighboring countries There is need for national repentance to hold back God's hand Luke 21, 25 And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring January 6, 2013 Australia firefighters face threat levels not seen for years. Residents who narrowly escaped the fire front described darkness as it approached. It was absolutely horrendous, it was if it was the darkest midnight you've ever seen. CNN reports that other residents described the destruction left behind as Armageddon. January 7, 2013. 
It's been an apocalyptic week in Australia, with heat so extreme the country's meteorology bureau added new colours to their weather map. In a sprawling catastrophic heat wave of historical proportions in the history of Australia. January 10, 2013. In the midst of fires burning throughout the land. A tsunami-like dust storm swept over parts of Western Australia. The sinister-looking storm is the result of a thunderstorm, adding dust and sand into the mix. The dust storm apparently developed in minutes and swallowed the entire town of Onslow. January 11, 2012. A severe tropical cyclone off Australia's northwest coast has shut down ports handling a fifth of the world's globally traded iron ore and cut supplies of natural gas and oil. Cyclone Meryl strengthened into a Category 4 storm, one short of the most severe Category 5 cyclone. It's about to change, the blood is about to, to go from the rivers and it's going to go from the, from, the, from the bodies of men. The blood is going to flow not from rivers but from the bodies of men and that's the sign, that's the sign, that's the sign. But here's what God wants us to do, God wants us to acknowledge his hand. If the world will acknowledge my hand, many won't have to die. 